Welcome back. So, in the last lecture, I introduced the concept of financial derivatives, gave you a summarized version of the various types of derivatives that is futures, forwards, swaps and options. And then we moved over to a detailed exposition of forward contracts, defined forward contracts and then went on to the arbitrage free pricing that is embedded in forward contracts. I followed that up with a description of the procedure that would uh, involve or that would uh, result in the siphoning out of arbitrage profits should there be deviation from the arbitrage free price of a given commodity in the forward market. So, let us pick it up from there. Let us recap quickly the concept of cash and carry arbitrage and reverse cash and carry arbitrage. The cash and carry uh, version of arbitrage will take place when the actual forward price exceeds the arbitrage free forward price. F star 0 is the actual forward price in the uh, the price in the forward market, whereas F 0 is the arbitrage free price in the forward market. So, we will simply take a um, long position in F 0 that implies that we will borrow an amount H 0 which is the spot price of the underlying asset prevailing at t equal to 0 as of today rather. We will use that S 0 uh, to buy one unit of the underlying asset in the spot market and hold the uh, underlying asset with us. Uh, against this holding of the underlying asset, we will take a short forward position. In other words, we will uh, take a, a position in a forward contract which entails delivery of the asset and receipt of the forward price. That is, these are the set of transactions that would take place at t equal to 0. At uh, t equal to capital T, which is the maturity of the forward contract, what will happen? The forward contract with mat mature will deliver the underlying asset which you already have with us and received an amount equal to F star 0. Please note this point because this is the actual price at which the forward contract was entered into at t equal to 0. It was not entered into at f 0, it was entered into at f star 0 which was the actual price prevailing in the forward market. And um, against this uh, against this, uh, this receipt of f star 0, what will we do? We will repay the amount that we had borrowed together with interest thereon and that will equal to the amount e s 0 exponential r t assuming that r is the uh, continuously compounded rate of return. So, that implies what? That implies that f star 0 minus s 0 e to the power r t is the residual cash flow and because f star 0 is greater than s 0 e to the power r t, this quantity is greater than 0 and we, uh, we extract a certain amount of profit out of this set of transactions. Then we talk about the reverse cash and carry arbitrage. The reverse cash and carry arbitrage will take place when the forward price in the market, the actual forward price prevailing in the market is lower compared to the arbitrage free forward price that is F 0. In other words, F star 0, the actual forward price is less than F 0, the arbitrage free forward price. So, in this case what will be that set of sequence of transactions at t equal to 0, we will short the asset, we will borrow the asset uh, underlying asset from a party and we will sell the asset forthwith in the spot market. In the cash market we will sell the asset and we will receive the uh, price uh, of the spot price of the underlying asset that is S 0. We will invest this amount S 0 at the prevailing rate of interest for a period equal to the maturity of the forward contract in which we take a long position with the underlying as the asset that we have shorted. So, the t equal to 0 set of transactions, borrow the asset, sell it in the market, invest the proceeds, this is one set and second set is that you take a long position in a forward contract on the same asset that we have shorted. And uh, at maturity that is at t equal to capital T, the maturity of the forward contract, what will happen? Because you are long in the forward contract, you will receive the uh, asset against the payment of the price which is which is what? Which is F star 0 not F 0. So, you will receive the uh, underlying asset, you will deliver it to the party from whom you have borrowed the asset uh, in, in compensation uh, or uh, uh, in uh, retirement of the obligation arising out of the borrowing of the asset at t equal to 0. So, you will in addition to this you will receive the amount that you have invested that is equal to S 0 e to the power r t. So, your net cash flow will be equal to S 0 
e to the power r t minus f star 0 and this is greater than 0 by definition or by virtue of this condition that we have uh, condition number 1 this implies that this expression is greater than 0 and therefore, we siphon off a profit by pres by following this arbitrage prescription. Okay, so, this is called reverse cash and carry arbitrage the form former process when f star 0 was greater is called the cash and carry arbitrage. So, cash and carry arbitrage operates when the actual forward price is greater than the uh, arbitrage free forward price and reverse cash and carry arbitrage ar operates when uh, the actual forward price is lesser than the arbitrage free forward price. So, in, in the event that uh, the carrying of the asset uh, entails receipt of dividends or entails uh, the payment of carrying costs. The conditions that we arrived at uh, get modified um, and the cash and carry arbitrage will take place when equation 1 holds and reverse cash and carry arbitrage uh, will operate when equation 2 holds. So, the factors that is d, d 0 and u 0 are here respectively what they are the present values of the dividend stream that you are going to receive while holding the asset with you while being long in the asset by possessing the asset with you during 0 to capital T where capital T is the maturity of the forward contract and u 0 is the present value of carrying costs that may be involved uh, that may be entailed uh, by holding the asset by keeping the asset with you for the period 0 to capital T that like go down rent like insurance premium and so on. Let us do an example. A one year long forward contract on a non dividend paying stock important non dividend paying stock is entered into when the stock price is 40 and the risk free rate of interest is 10 percent per annum with continuous compounding. At that time the forward price is 46. Is there any possibility of arbitrage? If so, how can arbitrage profit be made? To solve this problem what will we do? We will work out the no arbitrage forward price and see whether the no arbitrage forward price agrees with the price that is actually prevailing in the forward market which is 46 and if there is a discrepancy between the uh, arbitrage free forward price and the actual forward price which is 46, uh, we will infer that there is a possibility of arbitrage. So, let us work out the arbitrage free forward price, the calculations are given here a quite straightforward problem this is and we find that the arbitrage free forward price turns out to be 44.2060. I repeat the arbitrage forward price is 44.2060 and the actual forward price is 46. So, clearly there is a discrepancy between the arbitrage free forward price and the actual forward price. The actual forward price is higher, the arbitrage forward price is no or arbitrage free forward price rather is lower and what does that mean? That means, that you will undertake or you can undertake cash and carry arbitrage and siphon of profits from the system. Another example, on April 1st, 2021, a stock was expected to pay a dividend of 2.10 per share in 2 months t equal to 2 and in 5 months that is t equal to 5. So, t equal to 0 a stock was expected to pay a dividend of 2.10 per share in 2 months as t equal to 2 months and then t equal to 5 months a like amount the same amount of 2.10. So, there will be 2 installments of dividend during the life of the forward contract number 1 at t equal to 2 months and number 2 at t equal to 5 months and both of them will be of an amount equal to 2.10. The stock price at this date that is t equal to 0 that is 1st April 2021 was 50 and the risk free rate of interest was 24 percent with continuous compounding. Calculate the no arbitrage or the arbitrage free forward price for a 6 month forward contract on the stock. So, this is another simple problem the forward price works out to F 0 is equal to S 0 minus D 0 e to the power r t. So, this uh, the calculations that are given in this excel sheet are simply the calculation of this uh, right hand side of this formula. We start with f 0 and then we work out the present value of dividends. The present value of dividends turns out to be 3.9178. So, the net 
स्पॉट प्राइस और एच जीरो माइनस टी जीरो यू में से इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी सिक्स पॉइंट जीरो एट टू टू एंड द फ्यूचर वैल्यू ऑफ दिस नेट स्पॉट प्राइस टर्न आउट टू बी फिफ्टी वन पॉइंट नाइन फाइव सेवन फाइव विच इज द फॉरवर्ड प्राइज नाउ वी टॉक अबाउट एन अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पॉइंट यू वुड रिकॉल दैट वेन आई स्टार्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट द प्राइजिंग ऑफ फॉरवर्ड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट और कैलकुलेशन ऑफ द फॉरवर्ड प्राइज बेस्ड ऑन आर्बिट्रेज फ्री और आर्बिट्रेज फ्री कंडीशन आई पार्टीशन आई सेग्रीगेटेड एसेट्स इन टू टू टाइप्स इन्वेस्टमेंट एसेट्स विच आर हेल्ड फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट बाई अ मेजोरिटी ऑफ द कम्युनिटी एंड कंजम्पन एसेट्स विच आर हेल्ड फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ पर्सनल कंजम्पन बाई द मेजोरिटी ऑफ द पीपल इन द ट्रेडिंग मार्केट और द मेजोरिटी ऑफ द पीपल इन्वॉल्व इन बाइंग दैट एसेट so why was this discrimination necessary why was this uh, classification or segregation necessary in the context of calculation of forward price let us try to understand this how did we arrive at the forward price we arrived at the forward price from arbitrage free considerations and we also found that in the event that the forward price is greater and the arbitrage free price is lower then what will happen we will uh, sell in the forward market and will buy in the spot market and undertake cash and carry arbitrage and thereby that dif differential will tend to decline and become almost equal or close to equality conversely if the forward price is lower uh, or the price in the forward market is lower and the spot price is higher we will short the asset in the spot market sell it in the spot market and as the proceeds and take a long position in the forward contract at maturity what we will do is we will uh, buy the asset in, in the under the forward contract and re replenish it to the person who has lent the asset at t equal to 0 to us for uh, in uh, relation to shorting of the asset this is called reverse cash and carry arbitrage so if the forward price is lower the if the actual forward price is lower again the two will tend to neutralize as more and more, more people enter into reverse cash and carry arbitrage what happens if the force of neutralizing Uh, the price differential the force of eliminating the price differential by extracting out the profits in, in the case of uh, reverse arbitrage does not operate or operates with is substantially mitigated if what will happen in that situation in that situation what will happen is that the there can be situations there can be uh, uh, circumstances in which the forward price or the price in the forward market continues to remain lower uh, than the price in the uh, spot uh, spot market or the arbitrage free worked out price on the basis of the spot market and, and notwithstanding that equilibrium has been attained in other words there may be situations in which equilibrium is there but equilibrium is there notwithstanding the fact that the price in the forward market is lower compared to the uh, arbitrage free forward price because the process of reverse arbitrage is substantially mitigated what can be the circumstances what would that would mitigate uh, or substantially mitigate the possibility of reverse arbitrage because it is reverse arbitrage which is going to bring the forward price upwards and uh, the uh, the arbitrage free price low uh, downwards so that they become equal at equilibrium and that that force operates in the case of investment assets but in the case of consumption assets what is the reason that we can have a situation where the forward price continues to remain uh, lower sustained at a lower level uh, relative to the arbitrage free forward price uh, because the reverse arbitrage process is not uh, substantially activated let us say the reason is uh, very fundamental consumptions or uh, consumption assets are held by the um, parties and um, by the people who who are uh, uh, taking long positions in the asset for purpose of consumption and because these assets are held for the purpose of consumption the temptation is not to part with them uh, uh, not to uh, allow other people to use these assets not to, to allow the other people to borrow these assets and uh, short these assets or sell them in the market the temptation is to retain the assets with yourself the retaining of the assets with yourself gives you a sense of convenience sense of com comfort uh, uh, in because you are going to use or you plan to use those assets in the very near future 
So, if for example, if you are holding a, a, a deposit of uh, or holding a, a inventory of coal and uh, you lend the asset to somebody uh, tomorrow if the supply of coal, coal gets curtailed, then you could have a difficult uh, situation or your operations could be adversely affected. So, to protect yourself against that, you are more happy, you are more comfortable retaining the amount of coal notwithstanding the fact that uh, there, are, there are parties who are willing to buy that coal and some uh, uh, for sure shorting their position. So, that is the important part. In the case of consumption assets, the temptation, the desire, the motivation to retain the assets commands a premium and that premium manifests itself as a differential uh, 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 such that the arbitrage free forward price could be higher than the actual price in the forward market. So, let me quickly read, the, read through this now. Reverse arbitrage occurs when you buy forward and sell spot. Reverse arbitrage may not be used for a commodity that is a consumption asset rather than an investment asset because of the temptation to retain the asset. You do not want to part with the asset because you see uh, the shorting process entails that you part with the asset, you lend the asset to somebody and that somebody then sells the asset in the market and takes a short position. So, uh, that process of lending the asset uh, uh, is uh, is uh, beset with inconvenience, beset with a temptation not to do so, because if you have the asset with you, you feel more comfortable, you feel that your operations are insulated or protected against the scarcity of the asset in the uh, in the near future. So, reverse arbitrage may not be used for a commodity that is a consumption asset rather than an investment asset. Individuals who own a consumption commodity usually plan to use it in some way. This is fundamental. They are reluctant to sell or public lend the commodity in the spot market and buy forward because they want to keep it with them. This gives them a feeling of security because forward and futures contracts cannot be consumed. Hence, reverse arbitrage may not operate may not operate and as a result of it, because reverse arbitrage is not operating uh, efficiently, we find that there can be circumstances where the actual forward price is lesser than what? Than the arbitrage free forward price, arbitrage free forward price. So, this condition can hold in the case of uh, assets which are consumption assets. Allied to this concept, allied to this situation environment where we can have a situations where the actual forward price is lesser than the arbitrage free forward price, we define a quantity called the convenience yield, which is a measure of what is the level of differential that could prevail between the actual forward price and the arbitrage free forward price. How do we define this level of convenience? How do we define a measure of this level of convenience? Measure of this motivation, temptation to retain the assets with yourself rather than allowing them to be uh, borrowed by somebody and then buying them in the forward market. Uh, that is given by this equation. We introduce a parameter y. How is this parameter y introduced? Let us try to understand. Uh, in the case of the consumption assets, as I mentioned, we can have a situation where this holds. Let us call it equation number 1, where equation number 1 holds, so that is where the price in the forward market is lesser, actual price in the forward market is lesser and the arbitrage free price is higher. This allows us to define a quantity y by this equation, that is equation number 2. This you see because the right uh, left hand side is lesser than the right hand side, we can incorporate a quantity on the right hand side such that that by introduction introduction of that factor in, in the in the right hand side, this quantity y in the right hand side, we are able to introduce or replace this less than quantity by an equality. In order to replace this less than quantity by equality, what we do is we introduce a factor y and this factor y is called the convenience yield. And what is the, uh, what is the significance, what is the interpretation of this convenience yield? It is clear that higher this factor y, higher is the differential between the uh, actual forward price and the arbitrage free forward price. That means what? That means higher is the temptation 
higher is the motivation to hold the asset with you rather than parting the asset and then buying it in the forward market. So, the factor y that is the convenience shield measures the extent to which the forward price is lower than the future value of the spot price that is the arbitrage free price. Thus, y is indicative of the preference of the consumers to own and retain the asset. Higher the value of y, higher is the motivation, higher is the preference uh, of the consumers to own and retain the asset and consume it rather than uh, allowing it to be borrowed and then buying it in the forward market. The convenience shield reflects the market's expectations concerning the future availability of the commodity, the greater the possibility that shortages will occur, the higher is the convenience shields. That is quite obvious that uh, greater is the possibility of shortage, more is the temptation to retain the asset with you and higher would be the convenience shield. Again, if users of the commodity have high inventories, there is very little chance of shortages in the market in the near future and then the convenience shield tends to be low. If inventories are low, shortages are more likely and the convenience shield will be higher. This is an example on convenience shield, let us do this. The current price of wheat is at rupees 1200 per quintal. Storage costs work out to rupees 150 per quintal per annum per quintal per annum payable quarterly in advance. Calculate the convenience shield in percentages per annum if the forward price per quintal of wheat is 1425. The spot price is 1200. Carrying costs are 150 for the year in four installments, equal installments and payable quarterly in advance and the forward actual forward price is 1425 for a contract of maturity one year and the continuously compounded interest rate is 10 percent per annum. So, first of all we work out the arbitrage free forward price, the arbitrage free forward price is worked out in this excel sheet and it the arbitrage free forward price works out to 1485.94. So, this is what is F, uh, F0 and this is f star 0. So, using these two exp uh, expressions mm, we can uh, and what do, what is the relationship how do we define convenience shield? We define convenience shield as f star 0 is equal to f 0 e to the power minus y t f 0 e to the power minus y t here f star 0 is 1425 F0 is equal to 1485.94, 1485.94 and Y is the unknown quantity and T is equal to 1 year. This is equal to 1 year. So, knowing uh, all these quantities, we can find out that F uh, Y is equal to Y is equal to 4.19 percent. So, and, and uh, as far as this 1485 is concerned, we, find, we work it out as F0. This is our F0 in fact, 1485 as I have shown there. So, uh, F0 is equal to S0 plus U0 e to the power RT. There is no D0 here, no question of dividends, but there are carrying costs. So, we work out the present value of carrying costs. The spot value is given, the spot price is given as 200. So, knowing all the quantities, we can calculate F0. We use this F0 over here and we work out the value of Y, which is 4.19 percent. Now, we come to a very interesting point, which I had briefly alluded to at the uh, uh, when I started talking about forward contracts, why forward contracts are derivatives. Well, let us try to understand the quantitative aspect of what I had explained at that point in time. We consider a long position in a forward contract uh, A set up at t equal to 0. Let us let us assume that t equal to 0 is first January of a particular year uh, and the maturity is on 31st December that is capital T and the price at which we enter into the forward contract at t equal to 0 is F 0 T F. So, this is the this is the name of the contract, this is the contract A, the contract is set up at t equal to 0, let us assume it is 1st January, maturity is 31st December of that year which is capital T and the price is F0 comma T. Later at time T star, let us say it is 1st April, a forward contract B on the same underlying with maturity at T that means, it is having the same maturity is not same term to maturity, it is having the same 
maturity date as a please note this point it is not a maturity of one year not maturity from 1st january to 31st december it is having its maturity at 31st december uh, and that is uh, capital t so please note this point please note that the length of the forward contract is not the same uh, it is the point at or point of maturity that is the same and and obviously the underlying is the same and the price uh, that prevails at t equal to t star is given by this quantity f t star comma capital t so let me repeat we have a contract a which is initiated at t equal to 0 and which has a maturity of capital t let us say t equal to 0 is 1st january t equal to capital t is 31st december of the same year and the price at which the contract is entered into is equal to f0 comma capital t then we have another contract b which is initiated at t equal to t star let us say it is 1st of april of that year and it has the same maturity date as the contract a that is it has the maturity of 31st december of the same year in other words the length of the contract is 9 months it is not one year the length is different from the contract a the maturity date is the same the underlying is same and the price at which the contract is entered into is f t star comma t now what will happen let us try to understand let us say we construct a portfolio which is long in a and which is short in b we construct a portfolio at t equal to t, t star uh, at, at the point at which we have to value contract a our objective what is our objective our objective is to ascribe a value to the contract a so what do we do uh, we construct a portfolio comprising of the contract a long and contract b short so we construct a portfolio let us say pi consisting of a long plus b short. So, what will be its value? Its value will be um, v of pi is equal to v of a minus v of b because why this minus sign? Because b is short, a is long, b is short. But please note uh, the uh, value of a contract on the date of its inception is 0. So, v b is equal to 0. So, this is equal to v a. So, this part is quite simple. Let us look at the payoffs from this portfolio at t equal to capital T that is 31st of December. What will happen? The short position will uh, under the forward contracts will deliver the asset and the long position will receive the asset. So, the asset quantities cancel out. As, suppose the underlying is 1 dollar then the short position that is the contract B uh, or the party having the uh, short position under contract B will deliver 1 dollar to the party who is long in a uh, long in uh, the dollar and uh, th that means A will receive the dollar and B will deliver the dollar. So, the dollar content cancels out. Now, what about the price? The price at which A will receive the dollar uh, is equal to f 0 comma t and the price at which uh, b will deliver the dollar is equal to f t star comma t the because there is long so a will pay the price and b will receive the price so the net cash flow from the portfolio will be plus of this and minus of this uh, and th this is the net cash flow at the maturity of the contract and the value of this contract at t equal to t star will be equal to its present value which will be equal to when you put it here e to the power minus r into capital T minus t star. So, this is the value of the contract at t equal to t star. Let us look at an example quickly. So, uh, here is the example ok we will continue after the break.